So is the Zimbabwean economy in free fall, as many commentators believe, or is it a giant that's just waking up, which is the view of Zimbabwean ministers that were in Johannesburg today? They're on a charm offensive to lure South African investors back to Zimbabwe. Until two years ago, Zimbabwe's economy was showing signs of recovery from a decade-long uh, downturn that saw runaway inflation. The economy grew by more than 10 percent in 2012, but it decelerated to four and a half percent last year, and currently it's in a technical recession. Harare is struggling to get fresh financial aid until it services its old debts. Factories are underutilized or closed. Foreign investors, uh, foreign investment rather, more than halved in the first six months of this year, with many commentators blaming uncertainty around the indigenization policy, which means that businesses have to cede a 51 percent of their shares to Zimbabwean nationals. Well, earlier I spoke to Finance Minister Patrick Chinamasa. I started by asking him if the battle over who will succeed Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe is undermining Zimbabwe's recovery. To start with, uh, there is, we have the ruling party is Congress every five years. And so every five years there is jostling for posts and positions. And so what is happening is basically a jostling for posts and positions. Something that I consider healthy, very healthy, is a democratic expression of the people in Zanopiv who think strongly about certain positions, about certain leaders. So I don't see that as a bad thing. And it's not true that it has affected investments into Zimbabwe. It's not true. There has not been any indication in terms of whether deposits to indicate that, in fact, investors look at that in a negative sense. It really does sound, though, Minister, like there, there are two different economies here. Uh, reports and, and the IMF talking about infrastructural problems, uh, the indigenization laws causing investors to flee, the, the, the fact that you're broke. No, 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 we are not bankrupt. If you use the word bankrupt, you are looking at the balance sheet. And our balance sheet is good, strong. Are you understanding me? When you say bankrupt, it means your liabilities are more than your assets. That is not correct. That is a, a, a statement which is totally incorrect. Yes, we are illiquid. Liquidity is not the same thing as bankrupts. Are we clear? I understand the difference, uh, but this is still a, a huge problem. Yes, be because of the historical reasons. But we are coming out of it. I thought you heard me basically in other interviews, even in the meeting that basically we have engaged our multilateral creditors. We accumulated the debts when we started our land revolution from 2000. Before 2000, we were, we were paying and servicing our external obligations. It's only after sanctions were put in place, it's only after the upheavals that accompanied the land reform program that we, it crippled and undermined our capacity to pay and honor our external debts. But we are coming out of it. We are basically entered into an arrangement with the IMF, basically with the staff monitored program, which are monitoring, and their review in September was most satisfactory. So I don't understand where you continue the negative sentiments that you, you can. No, the IMF is very happy. We have a very constructive engagement with the IMF. For your information, we have successfully concluded a successor staff monitored program in October, just in October. And they've adopted it at their board of management. They are very happy. They've come to our country and they are very happy. But sometimes you speak on their behalf and not correctly to express their, their position. The IMF in its recent report did, uh, I believe, say that Zimbabwe is at a crossroads. Do you believe that that's true, that tough choices do need to be made? Yes, yes, yes. And we, 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 we are not shying away from taking those tough decisions. What I need to highlight and emphasize is that uh, our failure to own our external obligations from 2000 was not because of bad management, but because we consciously took a decision to repossess our land. And that basically undermined our capacity 
crippled our capacity to own our, our external obligations. Now, we have come out of it, we have come out victors because the land is now under our control. We have resolved a fundamental problem that was going to destabilize our political landscape. We have come out of it. Everybody accepts now that we, we, we have resolved our problem. It may, people may differ on how we did it, but everybody accepts we have resolved our problem. And as we engage the IMF, as we engage creditors, they accept that we have resolved a fundamental problem which was going to be to remain a destabilizing factor. And we are telling them, we are not bad managers. We are capable of taking the hard choices that will assist in sorting out our macroeconomic fundamentals, something that we are not able to do over the past years or so. We, we are, and we are taking them every day. The adamant Zimbabwean finance minister Patrick Chinamaso will still hear in this program from the central bank governor in Zimbabwe a little later. In company news, members of the community situated around Sassel's plants in Secunda and Sasselburg have marched on the company's headquarters in Johannesburg to demand that it reduces the amount of harmful